Well, it's always a good day when you can have a cigar and talk to one of the Renaissance men of the industry. U.S. Navy used to land airplanes as an air traffic controller. Had, when he started out, bales of tobacco dropped off on your driveway come a long way. One of the titans in the business, it's Nick Perdomo. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for having me. I am really appreciate it. Yeah. So we, we know the story, making cigars in your backyard, you know, X number of years ago, como yo oído, as they say in, right. in Spanish. So, so tell me about how this all started. When you walk into your offices here, do, do you just kind of pinch yourself and go, holy cow. You know, I got to be honest with you. I pinch myself every day. Um, you know, I start out of a garage. A lot of people know about that. It's really the American, the American dream and the American story. And my father, who came from Cuba with a shirt off his back, just like your family, told me, and I'll never forget, he said, you know, you live in the greatest country in the world, and if you work hard, you can attain anything you want. And I never forgot that. So with that being said, uh, I wanted to get in the cigar industry. It was 1992. I just got out of the military and uh, just got married. And uh, I decided I was going to get in the cigar industry and told my father at the time I was an air traffic controller, like you mentioned, and I had a really good job here in Miami as a controller. And I remember calling my father and saying, hey, dad, I'm going to get in the cigar industry. I'm going to start making cigars out of my garage. And my father said, you're a moron. You know, uh, you got a great job. You're doing really well. It doesn't make any sense doing that. And I said, well, dad, you told me something. He said, I live in the greatest country in the world. If I work hard, I can tell anything I want. He said, well, yeah, you're right. And to make a little story shorter, in 1995, um, I called my father up, the latter part of 94 to be exact, and said, dad, I sold a million cigars. I, I have a big cigar factory in Ybor City atop the Ybor City Brewing Company, and I have our big facility in Flagler Street. And then my dad, of course, said, well, maybe you're not so much of a moron. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was through a lot of hard work. I remember buying tobacco like you would buy ham. I'd buy it by the pound, and wow. I'd always tell the brokers, one day you'll see that I'll buy a bale from you. And today, thankfully, uh, we have a staff of over 5,000 workers. We have over a million square feet of building space, and uh, we got more than that that bale that, that I said, we have about a seven year inventory and we have about 28,000 bales of tobacco and aging at all times. So I've been blessed and my dad was right. I, we do, and you know it, you're, you yeah. come from the same descent that I do that, uh, you know, if you really work hard, you really can attain anything you want. We live in the greatest country in the world. I'm, I'm proud of that, but I'm also proud of our workforce and my family who've supported me. Cause you know, anytime you start a business, you work a tremendous amount of hours. So it was great. So what's more stressful, landing airplanes or running a cigar, opening up a cigar shop? I would say running a cigar business is a <laughs> lot more stressful because I'm, you know, I have cigars in my head day in and day out. I always say that air traffic control was kind of like playing a video game without having to put a quarter in. You could always shut it off. So uh, I really enjoyed air traffic control. It was a fun game. It was a fun trade for me and it was a great job. But with, with that being said, it also really kind of set me up in business. It, mm -hmm. it, it allowed me to handle tremendous amounts of stress. Because as you know, air traffic control is yeah. probably the most stressful job in the world. But so is running a business and, and having a family. So I think we all have our stresses. But I, uh, I really have to tell you that I love the cigar industry. And, it's been, and, and for us who consume these great cigars, we appreciate it. Now, right. now talk to me about the process. Uh, tell me from seed to out the door. What, how does all that entail for you guys? Well, we're lucky because we're vertically integrated. So we actually develop our own seed. We have our own genetic department. But you know, it's not just growing tobacco, it's growing in the right valleys, you know, having a great agronomy team. And you go in through the curing and the fermentation process and the aging process. And listen, I could talk to you for hours and explain to you, but just kind of in a nutshell, it's, this is a business you run with your heart, not necessarily with a pen and a paper and a calculator, mm -hmm. because you have to love it because it's done manually. So with that, you know, uh, it's a long process. It, from the time we put that seed in the ground, by the time you're smoking that cigar on average, it takes between four and five years before that cigar is finally made. Then it gets, after it's rolled, it gets aged in the cedar room for six to 10 months. So it's really um, a business that you must love. It's a business that you have to be very patient with. And um, I'm glad that, that our staff and, and especially me, I'm, I'm just, I'm very passionate about it. And I really wanna make our consumers and our retailers happy. You know, it, it's, you know, we talk about millennials all the time, how we need it now. We need it now, the Twitter, the Instagram. Years of fermentation, years of the sitting in a barrel. That, that had, when you started, that had to be mind-boggling. It was mind-boggling because we started in 1999 and, and in, the, in, the, in the growing seasons where we started growing our own tobacco, that was 21 years ago. And uh, 
Yeah, we started meagerly. We started with one acre. Today we have over 1,400 acres of tobacco that we grow. But with that being said, um, you have to be very patient. It's no different than a fine single malt scotch. It really takes time and you, you must love it. You must be patient because tobacco will speak and tell you when it's ready. And I really don't want to rush it. I want to make sure that it's perfect. Look, I'm very picky. Mm -hmm. And I think our consumers and retailers should be equally as picky. And I've always believed that quality would always bring quantity. Um, and we've been able to do that. And we're known for our quality of, a, of, our, of our products. Forget these trophies. I did a, an interview just recently for a European magazine. And these were just the, the last nine trophies that we won for best cigar of the year. And these are rated against every cigar from Cuba, Honduras, Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic. So I'm proud of that. And uh, we even have trophies like this, you know, when they first started, 1999. And it just shows the workmanship of, of, of the Perdomo worker, whether it be in Nicaragua or our great sales staff here in Miami or the 15 sales guys that we have across the country. We all pull the same way, and I'm very blessed. And I'll, I'll repeat it again. The greatest asset of my company is certainly not Nick Perdomo. It's our workforce, and we're blessed to have them. Yeah, I felt like I walked into, the, like, the Lakers or the Patriots locker room here with all this stuff going on. I had to throw that in there. We're in Miami. I'm, a, I'm an L.A. guy, so I had to throw the Lakers, you know. Well, we can't say anything about the <laughs> Dolphins, but what, what I'm most proud about these trophies, these were voted by consumers. Right. So it wasn't about advertising. It wasn't about that. It was you, the consumers, who, who rated. it. So that's what makes me the most proud of. Yeah. Now, one of the things that, one of the things that make you distinct is your wrappers. I saw this great explanation how you put them in bourbon barrels yes so t talk to me about the wrappers and that process and the different kind of wrappers that you use after we age all our wrappers which is the outer part of the, of the cigar when fermentation stops that's when most people if they ferment them that long which takes years will roll the cigar um in 99 my father came up with a concept of using bourbon barrels and the reason we use bourbon barrels are one they're not varnished so the tobacco could breathe Two, they, they char the barrels. So we knew that the concept of charcoal would be a filtering agent. And three, the impregnation of alcohol. It wasn't that we're trying to infuse bourbon in the tobacco. We're trying to use the free radicals of the alcohol to ferment it. So what it did, it gave it another fermentation period. And what happened was with three things. The tobacco's caramelized, the sugars rose, which gave a much better tobacco core of flavor. Two, that charcoal really worked great and taken out some of the rough edges that you can get with tobacco sometimes. And what we saw is in three, we saw these nice dark hues and cask colors that we were like, for example, you're smoking a Connecticut Shade Wrap Perdomo mm -hmm. Reserve Champagne. If you look, it's not yellow. It's, right. it's got almost like a butterscotch honey color and you could see the brilliance of that wrapper under the light because the oils and all those sugars caramelized to the top of the wrapper. And that's because of the bourbon barrel aging process. Now. It takes a long time on a wrapper like that. It can take upwards between six and 10 months. A wrapper that I'm smoking here could take, a sun-grown wrapper can take up to a year and a dark Maduro wrapper can take us up to 14 months of extra fermentation. Wow. But that time is worth it for our consumers. And I think it kind of differentiates Perdomo from a lot of the other cigar lines because of us doing it. A lot of people now are saying they're doing it, but you know, I don't know if they're doing it or not, but it's something that we, we really believe in. We have over 984 barrels in our company and uh, we have brands like Perdomo 12 year double age vintage where we actually case our fillers, binders and wrappers in bourbon barrels and we have them all certified and those tobaccos are actually 12 years old. And the reason we did that is for my love of single malt scotch and I wanted to come mm. up with something where you would have a vintage where it would have that, that type of tobacco, so it's special. Well, if you need any help, you know, emptying those bourbon barrels, I, I know a good guy that, 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 okay. that can do that for you. So, so now, Talk about the, the complexity and the and sort of the radical idea of the tobacco that you put in there. Because on paper, it almost didn't make sense the way you were combining them, but they come out perfect. Yeah, it just, it takes time. It depends on the fillers if you're going to do them, whether they're, they're light tobaccos, which are thinner in texture, or heavy tobaccos that are very thicker in texture, of course. So that tells us the time. And there was a lot of trial and error. You can imagine we've been doing this for 22 years. Mm -hmm. We got it down to a science, but it really makes a difference in the flavor of the actual cigar and the complexity, the aromas, the bouquet, everything it entails by using this bourbon barrel aging process. And like I said earlier, it really makes a difference. And I think it really differentiates our cigars from a lot of different cigars that I've smoked on the market. Because even though I own a cigar company, a lot of cigar makers will tell you they don't smoke other people's cigars. I do quite the opposite. I smoke everybody's cigars. And right. there's a lot of great cigars out there. And the reason I do it is because 
I want to be able to taste the difference and what kind of differentiates ourselves. And maybe I can pick up a good idea too in something like that. So I think it's really helped us also by doing that. What are you guys working on now? Before we get to that now, obviously we're living in the age of COVID. How has it impacted you, retailers? How, what's been going on with you in this age? Well, I almost feel bad about saying we've blown up since COVID's happened. And because a lot of people have stayed home, maybe they smoked one or two cigars. Right. Now they're smoking three or four cigars. You amortize that by the millions of people that enjoy cigars worldwide. What's happened is our, our industry has boomed. It reminds me a lot of the, the cigar booms in the, in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. Um, we have two full factories that are running nonstop. We never closed because of COVID because COVID wasn't really that big of a deal at all in Nicaragua. If you've been to our facilities, we're known as the COVID facility because I'm antiseptic. I'm almost like, I'm a big germ freak to be quite honest <laughs> with you. So what we did is we just separated our workers a little bit farther. We have a million square feet of building space. Our rollers have washed their hands seven times a day for the last 25 years that I've been in Nicaragua. Uh, we clean and mop. We've always done this, and we even field day. It's an old Navy term where we actually bring a cleaning crew to pick up every, every bit of dust that we can pick up and clean up everything. And the factory, a lot of people will tell you, the Perdomo factory is literally antiseptic. And to top that on, we actually freeze all the cigars at 45 degrees below zero for, for bugs and lack of dermia, and that kills anything. Mm -hmm. You can ask the CDC or anything else. Those types of temperatures kill everything. So... And we have a doctor on board and really we've had no workers that have been really sick. We've been very blessed by that, not only in our facilities in Esteli, but in our farms, whether they be in the Condega Halop or the Esteli Valley. So um, knock on wood, we've been blessed. We had a little, uh, you know, because of a lot of closures, uh, some of our salesmen had to stay home for a little while and, and work from home and retailers were kind of doing, you know, the stop and shop carry center from the outside to the inside, which impede a little bit of sales, but. The catalog companies sure kept growing because more people are smoking. And as we continue opening up, um, the business just keeps getting better. And we're blessed with that. How, how the retailers obviously have really taken the brunt of it. Because you said, you know, sort of foot traffic. How have you been working with them? Well, we, we did a lot of specials. And that's a great question. We wanted to help them. We understood that they were, they were having a slowdown. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that we could propel their business. So. Uh, we offered them specials that we normally don't do to try to build more profitability because these guys are struggling. They were having a tough time. Rents never stop and right. directs and indirects never stop. Right, right. And I think we're a good partner with them. You know, the brick and mortar community is very important to Perdomo because they're the ones who started our business. It's over 82% of our business, which is very unique in the cigar industry. Most people depend a lot on the catalog companies. And mind you, we respect the catalog companies. We're very friendly with the catalog companies. Sure. We think they're important because there's a lot of people that can't get to their local retailer. They're in different areas in Montana, Wyoming, different areas. And it's the easiest way for them to shop. But uh, they definitely carried the brunt of, of the, the sales and their sales went through the roof door in this thing too. And as the retailers are starting to open up, they're having monster years. I was just talking to a good friend of mine in Boston, David Garofalo from Two Guys Smoke Shop. And he said it reminds him of the mid-90s, like I said earlier, the boom. Yeah, it's that been was, great. Those were some days. Now, what, you know, just trying to nail you down for an interview was tough because well, I'm a big fan of accountability. That's how, I, to me, I, I, that's how I can always tell leadership, accountable. You, you're not here. You're on the road. You're on the road visiting, moving around because that's what leaders do, right? Yeah, and I love it. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I've been doing it for three decades and it's a blessing that I can be able to go out and see our consumers. And uh, I just came in from Cleveland and uh, what a week we had in the Cleveland area. I've, you know, I've, I've been all through the country and as long as I can fly and, and yeah. see people, it's a great thing. So it, it's, been, it's been really, really super. The events have been packed and people are happy to be right back out on the streets again and trying to resume their normal life. And that's, uh, that's very important, you know what I mean? So I've been happy to be able to go on the road, not only myself, but my son, Nicholas, who runs our sales department, Ralph Valdez, all our guys have been going out on the road and everybody's happy to see us and we're happy to see them too. Got you got to be a bit of a road warrior to be into this business. Oh yeah, I got 8 million miles on American Ooh. Airlines. So uh, yeah, I'm platinum for life. And uh, you know, you fly a lot when everybody addresses you by your name. Hey Nick, how you doing? You know what I mean? They so got your pretty, drink waiting for you there. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I live on an airplane a lot of the time. So talk to me about what's next in terms of you walk into that humidor. I mean, it's, it's Christmas day for a guy like me. 
What do you got coming up? Any new any new cigars, any new sticks? What's what's coming up? Yeah, we came out with the new Perdomo Reserve 10th anniversary Sun Grown and Maduro. It's been the biggest launch we've ever we've ever had since Perdomo Reserve Champagne. I don't really come out with a lot of new brands. It's not about how what's new, it's about what's consistent and quality driven. And we've had a lot of brands like the brand you're smoking. It's been out for 20 years. It continues growing. It's consistency. And I think the consumer needs more consistency instead of what's new. But we decided to come out with a new brand and we wanted to replace an older brand, which was our Champagne Noir and our Champagne Sun Grown. These two brands have been flying off the shelves. It's been beyond our belief. We haven't been able to even ship one cigar to Europe and we haven't been able to even give our salesmen a sample of it. Wow. But it tells you a lot in the last three months with when our consumers and our retailers have been buying the cigars and how the the sell through has been, it's been excellent. And um, I'm proud to say that today we started shipping samples to our salesmen after three months. You know, we always say don't smoke your own stash. Right. You gotta make sure <laughs> you take care of your, your customers, but people bought them sight unseen. And it was, uh, it, ma it makes you happy. We came out of the brand for day with, for two guys called uh, Firecrack. We, we shipped out a thousand boxes of cigars. We, we actually put 500 of them for sale. They went on sale at uh, noon and two hours and 43 minutes later, all 500 boxes were sold wow. sight unseen. And, you know, it makes you, it's really humbling when you see people spend their hard earned money because right. they trust your brand. And, uh, Perdomo is one of the most trusted brands in the industry. And, um, cigar fiction, just came out with a, a study. They, 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 they ask a bunch of cigar stores, the percentage of sales, uh, per, per store. And we came in, whether you, whether you, You'd look at it one way or another between number two and number three in the country. So and that's, uh, and you, and that's among some heavy hitters. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, I was I was really proud of that. Look, if you would have told me ten years ago I'd be in the top one hundred, right? I wouldn't believe you. So it's it's a great thing that that the company has done what it's done, and it's been through a lot of hard work. And like I said, I'm very proud of our workforce. They're fantastic. Yeah. In in this age of Twitter and Facebook. Perdomo Cigars is big on social media, right? And yes. so tell us about what you're doing. Cause I mean, I saw a great video. I think there, there, there's a big sort of misnomer about cigars. They're a little intimidating. Like I saw a video you had on your, on your Perdomo YouTube channel where you simple how to cut a cigar, how to right. light a cigar. And I think that sort of takes away the, the scariness, I guess, for people. I always tell people they go into a cigar lounge and they're new. Everybody sitting in that cigar lounge is going to be the most helpful to help you because everybody started at one time. Mm -hmm. And I think we do make cigars out to be a, a lot more bigger than what they are. It's about enjoyment and relaxation. And I think that the Perdomo Cigar YouTube channel is about teaching because I'll tell you, uh, whether you're a, a beginner or somebody who's been smoking 30 years, I've seen people cut and light cigars incorrectly and they've been smoking for 30 years. So um, there's a right way and a wrong way, but it's always a good way to learn. And what's great about cigars is not only is it relaxing and enjoyable, but you meet some of the best people. So right. sometimes people are intimidated when they go in that cigar shop, but if they would just meet those people out there, everybody wants to help everybody. So it's a great thing. I've never met many bad cigar smokers, that's for sure. That's true. Because that's, yeah. yeah, that's what it is. It's a time to, it, you know, it, to me, it's, it's like a good meal. You know, you're talking, you're friends. It, sure, some, some, you're closing deals, or you're watching a game, or you're just, you know what? You're decompressing after a day Absolutely. At, at the office or a day in the field. You know, you're just decompressing. I think that's what cigars bring to people. And I right? think you hit around the head. Decompression is probably the best word for cigar smoking. I've someone always asks everybody will ask me in a magazine, what's what's the best cigar you ever smoked? And I said, Well, how about this? I've never smoked a bad cigar in company of a great person. Whether it be my son, whether it be friends or in a cigar lounge where you're talking with a bunch of guys. You can always seem to enjoy that cigar in great company. And I've like I said earlier, I've never really met a bad cigar smoker. So talk to me, where can we find Perdomo? The websites, e-commerce, where can we find all your well, stuff? Well, uh, thank you for that. We're at www.perdomocigars.com. That's, that's our main site. We have, you know, a Perdomo fan page. We are big in social media, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. And I think it's important because I want to be able to connect with our consumers, especially during COVID, without being able to travel. We weren't lucky enough to be able to go out and visit them. And doing these Zooms and these Facebook Lives were great. And I got a lot of great response from a lot of our consumers around the world that we were be able to do that. Like I just did one yesterday out of a group with, out of Vienna, Vienna, Austria. And, wow. and it was great because I got to see a lot of our retailers in the German area and the Swiss area and, and, and in, in the Austrian area, which was really great. People I haven't seen because we couldn't go to our trade show this September in Germany. Mm -hmm. Yet I got to see them 
I, in my office and I got to see them in, in their place of business, which was a great thing. So it was really nice. Well, listen, I appreciate the time. It's your boy's birthday today, so it is even 28, more, yeah. Yeah, 28, right? 28, you, yeah. I mean, to, to, I mean, I've got I've got a son. You know, you right, I remember the day I brought him home for the hospital, and then all of a sudden there he is standing in front of you with a mustache or whatever. I know, you know it's crazy. So it is. I appreciate the time. Well, and, thank you yeah. for thank you for having me, and, and and thank all of you. It was a great interview. I, I loved the questions; they were fantastic. You know, sometimes you do an interview and you get these these questions that don't even make sense, <laughs> but it's nice that you love you love cigars and. Fantastic. Thank you all.